first trip to Joyland in Wichita, Kansas. Everyone is excited. It makes me sad for the kids that grow up here, I guess, because they don't get to experience all the fun times that we had here. I've seen on Facebook that they were trying to revive it for the last couple of years um, and obviously haven't had much luck. I do. I remember the Wacky Shack very well, the roller coaster and all of those things. It was, uh, it was the place to go on a summer evening in Wichita. It's, uh, it's sad that it's going to go on now. Dad worked into uh, managing the place. He had a lot of ideas for promotions and, and things to promote the park, and uh, he really enjoyed that. There's four kids, and we all grew up here out here. Um, Dad spent a lot of time out here. Uh, the competition for the entertainment dollar really went up, I would say, starting in the 70s. I think as that uh, competition happened, and the size that Wichita is, uh, it would not properly support the uh, rising cost of new rides and uh, things to improve the park. We saw a lot of amusement parks that were our size uh, begin to go under and, and owners just retiring and not you know, doing other things. So uh, it's just, it's, I guess you'd call it a, uh, a victim of, of time. Joyland Amusement Park in Wichita, Kansas was founded in 1949 by Lester Ottaway and his sons. It was in continuous operation for 55 years, at one point being the largest theme park in central Kansas. In the early 70s, the Ottaway brothers retired and sold the park to Stanley and Margaret Nelson, who were the driving force behind the park for over 30 years. At the beginning of the 2003 season, they sold the park to investor David Rohr. In the 2004 season, the park closed its doors mid-season, citing financial issues, safety concerns, and a dispute with the insurance company. David Rohr ended up defaulting on payments and failed to pay employees who worked at the park. Later that year, the Nelsons repurchased the park from a sheriff's auction, using collateral owed to them by David Rohr. In 2006, a third-party group leased it to restore and open portions of it. The park went through extensive renovations to rides, as well as cosmetically bring it up to date. The park opened briefly in 2006, but again closed its doors before the season was over. The doors never reopened. Since then, the park was left to decay. The footage you're about to see was filmed in August 2014. Two years later, the remaining structures were demolished. Keep it coming again.
Log Jam was built in 1985. It was one of the last major attractions added to the park. Built in 1949, this ride, originally just called Roller Coaster, was renamed a Nightmare for the short and final 2006 season. The roller coaster was designated an Ace Coaster Classic and had an 80 foot drop and reached speeds of 50 miles per hour. Despite the park's excellent safety record, there were two recorded deaths on this ride. The first occurred in 1977 when a seven year old boy was thrown from the ride when he stood up despite the signage. This was the park's first fatal accident since opening in 1949. Then, in 1998, a maintenance worker was brutally killed when he was hit by the roller coaster as he cut weeds underneath it. After the park closed, the ride set for 10 years, being retaken by nature before finally being demolished in 2016.
screwed it already. Not sure about a roller coaster. Chair to this game. Or something. Wacky Shack was designed by legendary Dark Ride creator Bill Tracy, who was born in 1916. He worked for Macy's creating parade floats before moving into the darker world of creating scary rides. Stunts Bill Tracy created for his dark rides in his early years were often brutal and sexual in nature. He pushed the limits of what would be acceptable at a family-oriented amusement park. He also seemed to have a rebellious side to his personality. He would often fabricate one of his props for a particular project to show an obscene gesture. The quote, fickle finger, unquote, was present in many of his attractions. Some parks caught on to this practice in Warnville not to use this offensive gesture on their ride. He did, however, usually find a way to work it in, even if it was subtle. Bill Tracy was known for his multi-level dark rides he designed. In fact, a very similar ride, also named Wacky Shack, still operates in Waldemere Park in Erie, Pennsylvania. His last known project, though, was this one, which opened in 1974. It's also one of his most famous rides. Yeah, that way just driving through and all this thing. I'm a photographer. Alright. Alright, we'll take off. Up there's well there's a bridge and just kinda of came right in. A little bridge on by the road. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. You want to go the same way we came in or? Yep. Alright, all right, see you later. Doing something a little bit more nefarious. Two at ten, the end of Joyland is near. Owners are tearing down what is left of the park.
that grow up here, I guess, because they don't get to experience all the fun times that we have here. Owner Stanley Nelson passed away in 2010. He put his heart and soul into this park, but like many other family-owned businesses, this park couldn't survive the massive corporate dominance of chains like Six Flags. Joyland Amusement Park in Wichita, Kansas, was left to inherit the wasteland. If you want to learn more about the history of this place, including photo galleries, documents, and everything else, visit the episode page at itw.crustlandia.com.